This morning's scripture comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, as well as the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. Now in Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star, that they had seen it at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw it, the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down, they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of life. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jasmine. Let us pray. Holy God, as we have come before your text, may we open our hearts to it. May we allow the words of scripture be the words that speak to us. May we allow the same spirit that's working in these texts and in these stories be the same spirit that works inside of us today. Amen. The three kings of Epiphany, or the, the three wise men, or the three magi. What do you say? What's most natural to you when you think of the three characters from this story, when you think of the nativity sets, what do you call them? The three, what is it for you? Maybe with the song from earlier today, you're thinking of we three kings, and that's still humming around in your head. Or maybe, just as Jaslyn was reading scripture, you heard the three wise men, and so you're focused on this. So then where does this magi part come in? And if you're thinking magi as in, is that the same thing for magic? You're right. That is the connection. Then. And sure, magi at the time were probably seen as wise, but and our Western brains, putting wisdom and magic in the same sentence doesn't really fit. But if we're to go to the Greek, 
to the original texts of the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 2, it's pretty clear the word is magoi, M-A-G-O-I, the plural of magus or magi, magic, all the same root word. As if the child to be born being prophesied as a king just wasn't enough. As if the Savior, the Christos, the Messiah, coming as a baby in a barn out in the sticks, far, far away from everything happening in the big city, as if that wasn't enough. As if shepherds coming, you know, those people that are kind of outcasts of sorts from all those who have power, and having them be told that something was happening, having them not only come, I have a story of an angel arriving and speaking to them as if that wasn't enough. Now we have these wise ones whose name really is a play off the word of magic or magician. What kind of God goes about saving the world like this? And yet, I think there's something that draws us in continues to draw us back not only to the stories, but to this God. Maybe it's some experience we've had or some grace that we've felt or some sense of liberation or some sense of forgiveness that just lightened our load. Or some new beginning. Some aha moment inside of our hearts and minds where in an instant we sensed a deep connection with ourselves and with all of creation. And even with the creator. And if we were to share that experience that we've had with another person, they may just think that we're a little bit off our rocker. Ah, it sounds like a bunch of hoopla. May as well use the word magic there, huh? So maybe epiphany, this time of the magi arriving and giving gifts to Jesus and his family is God's reminder to us that even the smartest folks in our area may think that we're just up to Tom Fuller. While others from outside our normal circles may just understand what's going on, even if it's not the tradition that they were raised in. That the connections we have can be forged with people in the most surprising of ways. That the God who created us has come to us all, to every one of us. And that this very God coming to us allows for new beginnings, for new beginnings that look like a new birth. That's where we are, aren't we? We're on the cusp of a new beginning, a new year. A new year full of hope, of possibility, of having a deeper connection with ourselves and with one another and with God. That's where we are. January 1st. In a moment, we're going to use some stars to help us to step into this new year. To be a guide of sorts to lead us closer to Jesus showing up in our lives. We invite you to receive a star and to sit with it and to allow your curiosity to just run amok. To open your heart and allow this prayerful conversation, curiosity, come together with God's spirit. Where God might be connecting with you as you look into the new year and to see where this star word may be able to guide you forward. Or hope is that this time, which we'll do during our offering, will be this time of prayer for you. And sure, it may sound like a bunch of hoopla to you, but God doesn't need normal channels to connect with us. If God can get through to a bunch of non-Jewish wise men magicians to travel from afar to give gifts to a baby born out in the sticks, and maybe God can use a little paper star to connect with you today. May it be so. Amen. I invite you to continue in worship and to stand as you are able and sing God of grace and God of glory. Number 577 in your hymnals.
God of grace and God of glory, on thy people pour thy crown. Crown thine ancient church's story, bring her bud to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. For the facing of this hour. Lo, the hosts of evil round us scorn thy Christ, assail his ways. Fear and doubts too long have bound us. Free our hearts to work and praise. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the living of these days. For the living of these days. Save us from weak resignation to the evils we deplore. Let the search for thy salvation be our glory evermore. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, serving thee whom we adore. Serving thee whom we adore. You may be seated. As we step into our time of offering, we invite you to join us in the time of flipping the narrative. Rather than asking you to give during our time of offertory, we're going to ask you to receive. In a moment, we'll say a prayer together, which is found in your bulletin, and then we will invite those in person to come up and receive a star, just a little star with a word on it, a small token that will be the focus for you for prayer. And for those who are online, Jaslyn in a moment will be putting them into the chat box, and you can choose one of uh, the five or so that she has typed in there. This is a word that you may or may not quickly connect with but a word nonetheless that God can use to invite you into a new realm of possibilities for your life this year. We will use the extended offertory music as a time to pray, to imagine, to talk, and feel free to pull out a pencil or a pen and to draw, to allow this to be a prayerful time where you can connect with God. And then you will be invited to keep those stars with you as a reminder of how God can and will be working in your life in the upcoming year. So let us join together in that prayer that is printed in your bulletin. Praying, God of today, tomorrow, and yesterday, like the Magi, we are seeking you. Like the Magi, we are bringing ourselves closer to you, step by step and word by word. So today, we ask that you would make yourself known to us. Reach into our spirits, give us a boost of confidence that love is real, and we are not alone. We know we're asking a lot for a group that brings very little. We don't have gold or frankincense or myrrh. We haven't spent the last three days traveling here by camel. We're no magi, but we're yours. Instead, we bring ourselves to this worship service in hopes of catching a glimpse of you. We look for the ways you guide us forward. We pray that you would speak to us through these star words that we are about to receive, just as you have spoken to your people before. Let these words be an invitation and challenge for the year ahead. Let them be light in the sky that guides us home. Holy God, you were the God of yesterday, and you'll be the God of tomorrow, for you have loved us from generation to generation. Amen.
Michael will be playing um, music for about five minutes or so. And in just a moment, I will go up and um, grab the bowl of Star Wars, which actually comes from a bowl that, uh, as we were talking about the Kane family, Roland Kane was the one who made this bowl. And it's what we use uh, for our baptisms here. And this is a time to remember our baptisms as well. That God has called us into different ways and different ministries in the world, but God has called us nonetheless. So let us step into this time knowing that God is waiting for us. Um, um. 